Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Together in oneness, we are Abe. This video is part two of Lost Knowledge of Soul Origins, Seven Rays of Light video series. In this video, we're going to talk more about the seven rays of light, specifically more about the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rays of light, because we talked so extensively about the first, second, and third rays of light in part one. So be sure that you watch part one of this video series to get caught up on what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're also going to look at all seven rays of light in terms of the color vibrations, how the seven rays of light are put together, and how we can visually imagine the seven rays of light, as well as how our soul on that non-physical vibrational level moves through these rays of light. So Abe starts off by saying that the knowledge of the seven rays of light are semi-lost in the galaxy. Lost rays of light equal lost souls who are not aware of their vibration. These souls open to the lower vibrations and often get stuck there. It is time to get those souls unstuck and back into the unification and harmony of the rest of the universe. I asked, is this the whole galaxy in terms of the seven rays of light being lost and souls being lost? or is it just planet Earth? And what came through was definitely the whole galaxy. Your galaxy is a very low vibrational galaxy. Knowledge of the seven rays of light are basically non-existent on your Earth planet, which adds very much to the vibration of the whole galaxy. Elements of the seven rays of light are found outside of your Earth dimension and planet. However, the lower vibrations on Earth open or leak lower vibrations into the rest of the galaxy. These lower vibrations are not in harmony with the vibrations of the universe, which cause a sort of distortion or a sort of disruption in the balance of the galaxy. I asked, is this distortion or disruption in the, in the galaxy only or in the entire universe? And what came through was in the galaxy, not in the universe, because the universe maintains an order, a balance, and harmony at all times, despite the disruptions in individual galaxies. I asked, how is this? And what came through was, the universes maintain order and balance because they are more so governed by source. The galaxies are more so governed by galactic councils. And I asked, so are the galactic councils to blame for the disorder in the galaxy? And what came through was no, galactic councils stem from source. Source allows the galaxies to play without interference. Galaxies are governed by a galactic council, but galaxies are subject to the souls that reside within them. Galaxies will maintain balance and harmony when the souls find balance and harmony within themselves. In the meantime, the Galactic Council serves as a sort of rod between the Galactic Sun and the galaxy. This helps bring source energy into the galaxy. Order within source helps bring a type of order to the galaxy. I asked, but I thought that our galaxy was out of order or distorted in some way. And what came through was yes, very out of order. But even in that disharmony is harmony in some way. Even in the out of order is order in some way, brought on by source. It is order at a very low vibration, but order nonetheless. The Galactic Council and higher vibrational and dimensional beings in your galaxy are working on bringing higher vibrational order to your galaxy. It is compared to living in the poor neighborhoods of your planet versus living in the rich neighborhoods of your planet. Your galaxy is not poor, but has the energy and vibration of poor neighborhoods. Source energy still loves each and every galaxy or neighborhood, but will not interfere in the building of the neighborhood or the galaxy. 
Source will step in and help indirectly when the neighborhood or the galaxy asks for help, but will not help directly. And I asked, why won't Source help directly? And what came through was, because the galaxy does not want it. Galaxies are built not by Source, but by open energy. Open energy of the galaxy desires to create the galaxy, not from Source, but from within. The open energy that creates galaxies are not source itself, but open energy that stems from source. This open energy that creates the galaxy is what you now know as the first and second rays of light. Combined, they are the mind of God and the energy that creates galaxies and worlds stemmed from the thought vibration of the mind of God or the first and second rays of light. These open energies have a thought, a desire, to create a galaxy, and so it is. Joined with Source, the open energy creates a galaxy, but not in Source, but outside of Source. Galaxies are not created in Source. Source is within everything in the universes, but the universes are not within Source. The energy of Source is within everything, but everything is not within the energy of Source. Hindered thought is thinking that the universes exist within a greater source, but it is source that exists outside of the universes, not to control it, but to oversee it. And I asked, what does that do for source? And what came through was, it allows source to see its creation from the outside. I asked, but wouldn't source want to be part of it? And what came through was that, Source experiences the creation indirectly through its creation, through the eyes of those that are created in the image of Source. It is not directly part of the creation because it is directly part of another creation. I asked, what is Source a part of? And what came through was, Source is a part of oneness. Loop of infinite time applies to loop of infinite creation. Okay, let's now move into the four remaining rays of light. So if you recall from part one of this video series, source was like a parent cell that divides or separates into two daughter cells, which equal the first ray and the second ray. The first ray representing that divine feminine, the quality of power, um, energy of open creative energy, that life force, energy of oneness. It also represents the soul or the spirit aspect, the energy of God. And the second ray represents more of that divine masculine energy, the quality of wisdom, the energy of knowledge, energy of oneness in the mind, and also represents more of that mind or thought. And then combined together, the first and second ray um, equal that the mind of the cosmos or the mind of God, which then create the third ray, which is represented as the body of the cosmos or the body of God, a reflection of source itself. When it comes to the lower four rays, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rays, I was shown it more as light refraction. The first three rays were shown as this cell division process, and then the remaining rays were shown as light refraction. The vibration of the first and second rays combined equals or creates the third ray. And as we went over in part one, the last video, the third ray is the non-physical vibrational body of the cosmos or body of God and life is created out of the third ray energy, which holds the unification of the first, second, and third ray, also known as the trinity of the mind, body, and spirit energy of God, that reflection energy of God. So in terms of light refraction, you can see source, first, and second ray as sort of um, the energy of white light when it comes to light refraction. The energy of the first and second ray, along with that underlying energy of source, um, sort of, it first of all creates the third ray, but also that energy moves through the third ray and refracts into the seven rays of light. 
The third ray still encompasses and embodies the first three rays because it is made up of the first two rays and it itself is the third ray. So the first three rays will still be included in this light refraction. The body of God is seen as sort of this prism that the light is refracted in, within, and then without. Now the thing to remember about the seven rays of light is that they are non-physical vibration on a soul or non-physical level. Um, in its purest form, it is, it is pure vibration. Um, but we will talk further in just a bit about how it then refracts in the physical body and brought into the physical. But first, we're talking about purely the non-physical vibrational energy. So what was shown to me was that the seven rays of light are, besides them being colors or represented by colors, they are more so vibration as shown uh, through like waves, um, waves of vibration. The higher rays, which is the first, second, and third rays, vibrate at a much higher, faster wave frequency. And the lower rays, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rays, vibrate at a more slower, lower wave frequency. So now let's talk more about the descriptions of these remaining four rays of light. Remember that the knowledge provided to me regarding these seven rays of light come from more of this higher perspective of Abe, the non-physical interpretation of the seven rays of light, um, not the physical interpretation, which I found in a lot of um, doing research about the seven rays of light, I found my information to be a bit different from what other people are receiving in terms of the seven rays of light. But also keep in mind that we're all bringing forward and presenting our information from our own perspectives and our own guidance and where we are vibrationally, each very different from each other. So you'll resonate with um, whatever interpretation you're going to resonate with. So we went over the first three rays in the last video, part one. So be sure that you watch that video first before continuing with this video. Let's get into the remaining four rays of light descriptions. Again, the seven rays of light are qualities of God, expressions of God in this vibrational state, also pulled into the body of God, that reflection or image of God, which includes us as physical beings, it includes our souls, um, and how we all, everything in the universe, everything in creation, embodies these seven rays of light, but it's about how we vibrate and align to it on a soul level and also on a physical level. Now the fourth ray is when we start to move into the lower four rays, and the lower four rays are sort of seen as separate from the first three rays because the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rays are energy that can be interpreted or manifested into the physical and the first three rays it's very unlikely for them to be manifested in the physical in a way it feels as if the first three rays sit or stay mostly in the non-physical and i see them as like energy more so that runs through us um, and helps to guide us in a way just like how the first, second, and third rays of light combine to create that trinity of mind, body, and spirit, in the non-physical, it's like that is a part of each one of us, but it doesn't physically manifest. It is just that frequency or that vibration of energy that runs through us and within us. The fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh are also non-physical, but you can bring them into the physical, and we'll talk about that. So the fourth ray was described to me as the ray of love. It has the quality of purity, the energy of love in the physical, and this means open hearts. So going back to the third ray, this is also the quality of love, but Abe described that the third ray was quality of love 
from source on a soul level, remember that non-physical vibrational level, and then the fourth ray, ray of love, is quality or energy of love in the physical. It represents love and purity of heart. The color associated with the fourth ray is the color emerald, and the keepers of the ray, which are figures that are sort of these representatives of the vibration of the ray, they also work within the collective uh, through people as these vibrations of these rays to sort of um, get people to awaken or to align to the energy or the vibration of these rays, both on a physical and a soul level. So the keepers of the fourth ray are Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Knowledge of Love in Open Hearts, Mother Mary, Angel Hope, Ganesh, Gaia, Lady Nada, Serapis Bay, the Arcturians, the Lyrians, the Andromedans, the Pleiadians, and the Blue Avians. And going back to distinguishing between the third ray, heart of God or love of God, and the fourth ray, I asked Abe, can you tell me the difference? And what came through was that the third ray is the soul recognizing the vibration of love from source. The fourth ray is the physical person recognizing love frequency in the self and opening the physical heart. The fourth ray is all about the soul recognizing and experiencing love in the physical. I asked, but wouldn't they be connected? So if one opens, such as the fourth ray, then the third ray should open, like a domino effect. And what came through was no, the soul opens to the vibrations of the seven rays of light in a much more different way. Sometimes the physical person can open the fourth ray in the physical, but the soul is unable to open the third ray vibration on a soul level. The third ray vibration is much too high for most souls. Most souls stay in the fourth ray of light vibration. So let's move on to the fifth ray. The fifth ray was described to me as the ray of truth and healing. It has the quality of truth and the energy of truth and healing. It represents the truth of source within, in the physical and the non-physical. The color associated with the fifth ray is yellow, and several keepers of the fifth ray are Kali Ma, open energy of inner earth, or Mother Nature, Lord Shiva, Archangel Michael, Krishna, Brigid, God Mercury, Melchizedek, Odin, and Radha. The sixth ray was shown to me as the ray of manifestation. It has the quality of divine inspiration that sparks manifestation. It is the energy of spirit and universal energy. It opens up the energy of creation in the physical and the non-physical. It also opens up the ability to manifest, and it represents humanity's quest to be creators in their own right. The color associated with the sixth ray is the color orange, and several keepers of the sixth ray are Isis, Vishnu, Freya, or who Abe calls Frinda for some reason, Angel Charity, Joan of Arc, Sir Nunos, Saint Germain, Abe themselves, the Seven Pillars of Light, and other open energy of oneness, um, just to name a few, such as the Higher Self, the Ancestors, etc., and also the Lyrans. And moving on to the Seventh Ray, the Seventh Ray was described to me as the Ray of Recognition. It is the quality of recognizing the power within, the quality of recognizing non-physical energy and vibration, and also the energy of the universe or universal energy. It represents humanity's quest to search for bigger answers, and it represents the soul vibration brought into the physical aspect, meaning the recognition of the soul in connection to the physical. The color associated with the seventh ray is the color ruby, and some of the keepers of the seventh ray are the Galactic Council, the Galactic Federation, Commander Ashtar, the Divine Director, Paul the Venetian, Kuthumi, Angel Faith, Dewal Kul, 
Goddess Diana, the Miriam, Lady Venus, Sanat Kumara, Kuan Yin, the Andromedans, the Pleiadians, and the Elementals, which are like the fairy realm, the dragons, and the earthly elementals. So another thing to note and keep in mind in terms of the keepers of the rays of light, there are energies or beings or figures who are also keepers of all seven rays of light. So they're kind of energetic guidance throughout all seven rays of light. Most of them include the higher frequency energies, the open energies of oneness, such as your higher self, ancestor energy, etc. Also high frequency energies, such as Abe themselves and the seven pillars of light, who are very similar energetically to Abe, as well as the galactic beings, the mantis beings, the Syrians, open energy of star constellations. And also what was described to me was all of the keepers in the first, second, and third rays of light are also, because they're working with these such high vibrational rays of light, they are also keepers or sort of energy guidance for all seven rays of light as well. You'll notice when I went through the keepers of the ray that there are not many archangels who are associated with any of the rays or keepers of the rays. And I asked Abe about this and why none of the archangels came through. And Abe said that the archangels are mostly working with the lost souls, souls who are not even on the radar of the seven rays of light on a soul level. The seven rays of light are vibrations when the soul recognizes the light within. There are some souls who do not recognize the light within. They have fallen that much farther away from source. I'm also getting that there are a lot of light workers who work with the archangels or the angels, and I guess their mission or their path is very much to help with the lost souls and to help sort of um, open up the lost souls in finding their, their inner light and bringing them towards the seven rays of light, towards inner recognition of who they truly are on a soul level. Okay, so my next question was, how do these seven rays of light relate to everything? Why am I being shown this? Like, what's the purpose? And what came through is, we are showing you the creation energy on an open universal scale, the macro. The macro is then opened into the micro, the creation of the planet and all life on the planet in the physical form. But the energy of each of the seven rays still run through the body, regardless of what that body is in the entirety of the universe, whether physical or non-physical, macro or micro, it's all the same. Finding balance of the seven rays within opens you up to finding balance with universal energy within and without. I asked, what do these seven rays represent? And what came through was the qualities of source. Each person contains all seven rays. Each person is source in body. The physical human being can be seen as the micro of the third ray or the body of God that contains all seven rays of light. On a soul level, each soul also encompasses or holds all seven rays of light. However, on both a soul and a physical level, it's about where you're vibrating at. So on a soul level, if the soul is able to vibrate at a specific ray of light, that energy or that vibration trickles down into the physical vessel and the energy that the physical vessel holds within. The soul can also choose to not vibrate at any of the seven rays of light. This puts the soul in a lower vibrational state, which also trickles down into the physical vessel. These seven rays of light can be seen as waves of vibration. The lower rays vibrate at a slower and lower frequency or wave. The higher rays of light, especially the first, second, and third rays of light, vibrate at a much faster, higher frequency or wave. So the next thing that was shown to me 
was the seven rays of light in terms of the colors that are coming through. And the colors that came through for me was very much the same colors as the chakras, but almost like an inverted way, because as you can see, the first ray of the seven rays of light is this violet color. And in the chakra system, the first chakra is the root chakra, which is the red, um, that ruby color. So it's similar but different than the chakra system, and we'll talk about that. But in terms of understanding how these seven rays work, or how maybe I can visualize it, what was shown to me was the seven rays of light as this sort of layered wheel or target board. The innermost layer is the first ray of light moving outward, the seventh ray of light being the outermost layer of this layered wheel. And the center of this wheel or this target board is source. So the circles, the first ray of light, the second ray of light, the third ray of light is very much closer in proximity to source, as you can see, with the first ray of light being the closest in proximity to source. You can also see here, I made these wave vibrations because the seven rays are wave vibrations in addition to the colors represented by them. So the seventh ray of light, which is the ray of recognition, is the slowest and lowest vibrational wave or ray and so on and so forth with the first and the second rays of light being the highest and fastest vibrating rays of light closest to source. So like I said, the seven rays of light are very much on a soul level. And it's possible for the soul to not even vibrate at any of these seven rays of light vibrations. So they can very much be not basically not even on the target board. Um, but if they are not on the target board, then the closest ray that they would be able to reach vibrationally would possibly be the seventh ray because of its lower and slower vibration. In terms of acclimating to vibration, the soul can kind of step onto the wheel or this target board first through the seventh ray of light, this ray of recognition. So the soul's mission or when it realizes that it can align to these vibrations, it's more so a path or a journey inward towards getting to source, which is the innermost part of this wheel. So that's why I have the arrows moving inward. And the one thing that was shown to me was that when the soul makes the connection with the physical body, it's like that connection is very much tethered together. So it's as if they need each other. The soul needs the physical body as the soul ascends, as the soul sort of aligns or vibrates which, with each of these seven rays of light or whichever ones that it can vibrate with um, and align to, the physical body can also vibrate higher and sort of ascend in consciousness and energy in the physical and vice versa. So they're working together. So I have that in the soul connecting with the physical body without, the soul can then work towards connecting to the vibration of source within. So now let's look at the seven chakras. So the seven chakras, as you can see, the colors are very much inverted from the seven rays of light. The seven chakras are in the physical. It is in the physical body versus the seven rays of light are in the non-physical soul. Again, they're not the same thing, but I want to show you how they are connected. On a soul level, you can see that the ruby, the red, is the furthest away from source. In the chakra system, the ruby red color, which is represented by the root chakra, is actually the first chakra. And it is here, I have in the middle of the chakra wheel, is the physical body. And the root chakra, which is the first chakra, is the closest in energy to the physical body. And it goes out from there. And the fifth, sixth, and seventh chakra, the throat third eye and crown chakra being more of the higher chakras we're kind of like moving into the higher chakras so they are technically further away from the physical body and more into that spiritual body or that soul body or that connection between the physical and the non-physical 
So you can sort of visually see how it's represented here in connection to the seven rays of light and the seven chakras together. The seven rays of light, however, we said that the soul, this because this is on a soul level, the soul is making its way inward towards source. So it has to somehow be able to get its vibration high enough to make its way inward into um, the higher rays of light. In the chakra body, the it's more like the physical body or the energy of the body is moving outward away from the physical body and more towards the spiritual body. So this is why that energy sort of rises up from the root chakra, that kundalini awakening of that energy moving upward and outward, connecting the physical body with the spiritual non-physical body. So I have here that in the physical body, connecting to the energy of oneness within the physical body or the person can then work on connecting to the soul without. In the soul establishing connection with the physical body or the physical vessel, the soul can then work on connecting to the vibration of the seven rays of light within. And what's coming through is that the soul, how the soul establishes connection with the physical vessel is the physical vessel has to recognize that non-physical energy that it has within. What's also coming through is that although the soul and the physical body are connected or tethered together, the physical body still very much has that free will. So even if clarity might be found on a soul level, it does not always translate into clarity in the physical level. So it's like that physical vessel, that physical person could be dismissing that clarity in their soul and not wanting to address it. Or maybe they're too caught up in the physical reality in front of them to really make that deeper connection to their soul. So there very much has to be this harmony with the physical vessel and their non-physical soul energy to be able to kind of have everything sort of come into balance for the mind, body, spirit connection in the soul as well as the physical. So speaking of the chakras and the energy as interpreted into the body, I want to move into this sort of concept of light refraction. So let's move back to the illustration. Okay, so let's look at how these seven rays of light are refracted, if you will, into the physical. So if we start at the third ray, the third ray is that body of God. It is the image of God, the reflection of God or source. And the first and second ray combined with source sort of join together in creating this white light that is within the third ray, but also serves as this refraction into the seven rays of light that is held within the third ray as well as without the third ray. As we spoke about in the last video, life is formed in the union of the first, second, and third rays. This is the mind, body, and spirit of source. Basically, it is the trinity of source. It is the energy closest to source. And this energy is held within the third ray. So it is within the third ray that souls stem from. So souls are born in the vibration of the third ray and there sort of starts the creation of life process, if you will, um, on a soul level. And so if you want to take this further, when the soul incarnates, it incarnates in the reflection or the image of God and you get the human, the physical being. So in a way, the physical human is also an image of God. It is a reflection of God. And you could say that the human physical being is more so a reflection of the third 
ray of light and the third ray of light is a reflection or the image of source so it's kind of like that stepping ladder in terms of the hierarchy although in essence we're all one what's being shown to me in terms of that hierarchy is more so like um the lineage of source so there's source and then there's the image of source which is the third ray on an energetic vibrational scale and further down is the incarnation of that soul in a physical body which is the image of source but through the mirror of the third ray of light if you will and so in the third ray the refraction of the seven rays of light that move through the third ray body of God, that is on a soul, non-physical, vibrational level. Now, when the soul incarnates into a physical vessel as a human or a being, the seven rays of light are still held within the soul and within that physical human being, except that it is now considered a further refraction of that original refraction of the seven rays of light. So it now goes through a second filter, which is that human physical vessel, and refracts further into seven further rays of light, which is seen or interpreted more so on this physical level because it's refracted within the physical body of the human. Because of its further refraction, so to speak, What came through was that it tends to have a more so distorted or skewed um, perception or interpretation in the physical than it would in or on a soul level. Um, So it's like us being able to interpret the energy in the physical obviously would not be anywhere close to the same as that same energy would be in the non-physical, in the vibrational um, soul level aspect. Of course, I'm seeing that it's much higher, um, it's much more pure in the non-physical vibrational level. And now, since we're on the topic of this lineage of source, um, being source and then the third ray and then the physical incarnation or the physical body in terms of reflections or images of God, I wanted to bring this up because it was this amazing synchronicity in terms of me being able to come to this conclusion and having this information come to me about the lineage of source. And then immediately after I brought this information forward and I recorded this, um, I was sort of led to continue reading the book, The Hermetica, The Lost Wisdom of the Pharaohs. I was in the middle of reading it. So I continued on with the next chapter. And immediately that chapter that I started on actually contained this text that talked about this same lineage of God, which obviously is no coincidence, but I'll read it to you and I'll put it on the screen as well. There are then these three, Atom, Cosmos, and Man. The Cosmos is contained by Atom. Man is contained by the Cosmos. The Cosmos is the son of Atom. Man is the son of the Cosmos and the grandson, so to speak, of Atom. Atom does not ignore man, but acknowledges him fully, as he wishes to be fully acknowledged by man. For this alone is man's purpose and salvation, the ascent to heaven and the knowledge of Atom. So much of the information that I'm receiving at this moment is aligning very much to the texts in this book. And in this passage, what it's saying is Atom, which is source, um, and then Cosmos, which is that third ray, the body of the cosmos, and then man. Having that order or lineage, man is the son of the cosmos, which, like I'm saying, human, the physical body, is the reflection of the third ray of light, that body of the cosmos, and the grandson so to speak, of source. And another thing, since we're on this topic of lineage in terms of God, and then the body of the cosmos, and then the body of the physical human, Abe wanted me to make this connection 
to the soul as a gateway to retrieving lost knowledge. And I asked, why is this connected to the lineage part? And what came through is because in knowing that we are a lineage of source or knowing where we are in terms of source, it allows us to understand that essentially we are source, we are the reflection of God, we are the image of God, and knowing this, it allows us to connect deeper to our lost knowledge that we hold within. When the soul is able to make it onto this wheel, this target board of the seven rays of light, the lost knowledge for both the soul and the physical person is being unlocked. But the problem is that people are not aware that they hold this lost knowledge within themselves. And I asked, so does this mean that many people are on this seven rays of light target board, this wheel, but they're still not retrieving their inner lost knowledge? And what came through is yes, because they do not ask for it. So I think Abe just wants to make it clear that as you are working on your own vibration, both in the physical and on a soul level, it's important to acknowledge your inner lost knowledge and make the intention to bring it forward because it has to first come through your intention of desiring that inner lost knowledge to come into your physical awareness. Going back to this layered wheel of the seven rays of light. So it was described to me that when a soul is able to sort of vibrate at one of these seven rays of light, um, it becomes like a magnet. In terms of an illustration, it's like something happens to this wheel when a soul is able to magnetize onto or vibrate at one of these seven rays of light. But what came through is that it's not symmetrical, it's not consistent, it's not um, it's not like a spiral, it's, it doesn't necessarily go in any perfect order. Abe showed me the vision of when you get to the end of the toilet paper roll and there's only like those scraps of toilet paper left on the roll and how it's not like a perfectly rolled toilet paper roll. It is just scraps at the end. It is here and there. It's not perfect. So it's like whenever the soul is able to vibrate at one of these seven rays of light within a lifetime or a physical incarnation, um, it's it's seen as like these sort of notches on this wheel. And so the wheel keeps track of these notches within the soul's memory. It does not go in order. It does not go in a spiral. It goes by vibration. So it's like if the soul was able to make it onto the wheel in one lifetime, it's shown as a notch. Within that lifetime, it's, if it's able to kind of make it more inward into from the seventh into the sixth ray of, of light or vibration, then that notch kind of comes up and so on and so forth. In the next life, maybe something happens where they get kicked off of the board vibrationally and they don't exist on the board anymore because they're kind of put in a situation vibrationally where they're that much farther away from source. So maybe it's not on the board here, but then it comes back in another life and it's able to master more higher vibrations on the seven ray of light, this path. Um, so it's not going to be in order. It's going to be based upon what the soul can achieve vibrationally in its lifetime, in its lifetimes. It's also being shown to me that um, each lifetime is sort of like a different layer on top of this target board, this wheel of the seven rays of light. Like I'm seeing it as, you know, those transparent uh, papers that you can sketch on and you can see through. So it's like they're layered on top of each other so you can still sort of see through at the notches from the previous lives and when the soul incarnates into a new life, um, a new transparent piece of paper gets placed on top and it becomes like a stacked um, seven wheels of light target board basically with the memory of all the previous vibrations that the soul was able to achieve in its soul memory or history. So it may not seemingly go in order, but what was described to me was that it's as if 
each of these notches are like um, unique notes to the soul or for the soul. So when you put everything together, it kind of creates like this song sheet. And that song sheet is that unique signature vibration of the actual soul. It is the song of the soul. So if we move this back to the whole lost knowledge thing, this is where it's important to understand that all of these um, layers of the soul's memory or the soul's history combine to create the soul's footprint, signature, song, whatever it is, but it holds all of the soul's past, basically, or memory, including the very valuable lost knowledge that is important to retrieve in your current day. Um, I'm seeing it as like um, with you connecting to your soul, understanding that you're God, understanding that you are source in a body, it gives you that power to understand that you have access to your lost knowledge. I see on a soul level, like going through files. So all these layers of the soul's history or memory, you can just go through the files, pick the files that you need, um, that, that lost knowledge, and bring it into the physical. So it's not just about pulling in the vibration, but it's also pulling in the lost knowledge that you're holding on that soul level, on this target board, on this wheel from your soul's memory. Next, I asked, does or do the notches continue in the next incarnation? So, for example, if the person or the soul made it to the fifth ray of light in an incarnation, are they reborn in the next life in the same vibration of where they left off in that fifth ray of light? And what came through was yes. That is how it worked with the karmic cycle on your planet in the past, but it is different now with this lifetime, with the ascension. Souls will not only incarnate in the next life with a higher vibration, but will incarnate or be reborn in the next life aligned vibrationally with the fifth ray of light or higher, not lower, even if they left off or died in the lower vibrations. So that applies when we move into 5D and we move into the higher vibrations, the higher dimension. However, right now, because we're in this weird in-between place of 3D and 5D, what came through is that reincarnating now into our Earth experience with a higher vibrational ray of light applies to souls mostly incarnating specifically for light worker purposes to help with the ascension. Um, some souls will still choose to incarnate in the lower vibrations or not even on the seven rays of light wheel to experience the play out of 3D. And that's it that I have for this video lost knowledge of soul origins the seven rays of light series there's still more to talk about the seven rays of light and in the next few videos we're going to have conversations about more about how these seven rays of light tie into our soul origins um, and our roles as light workers on the ascension path we're also going to talk about where we come from on a soul level, the construct of our galaxies, where, where our soul goes when we die, and talking about the seven rays of light as actually crystalline grids. There's still, like I said, so much more to go over, so stay tuned on this ride of lost knowledge of soul origins, the seven rays of light. And leave your questions or comments below if you'd like Abe to address them. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Together, we are Abe in oneness and love.